Frugal Crafter. Today I am reviewing this set of 24 Pro Markers from Windsor & Newton. Now you may from, be familiar with Pro Markers because they were uh, previously Letra set, um, but they are rebranded under the Windsor & Newton name now. And um, we're going to try these out and see how they compare to the old ones, which I've showed you before in tutorials. I'm also going to be using this marker paper, which is designed to be used with the Pro Markers. But first let's take a look at what's in this set. This is 24 um, markers plus a marker case and I believe this is going to retail for about a hundred dollars. Um, I looked online to see if I could find it. Um, it was listed on Amazon for retail $99.99 and then their price was like $75 to $79 but it was also not available yet so I think these are I think they're coming soon. I don't know maybe um, Maybe they're available for sale at some places. I just didn't find it when I was looking. I was still seeing some Letraset Pro markers, and I've been noticing that the stock on the Letraset ones have been dwindling everywhere. So, um, so this is what you're going to see when you go looking to buy your Pro markers in the future. So. Um, public service announcement there here. Don't don't freak out. It seems like they're running the same exact palette as the Letraset Pro Markers. I think they've been owned by the same company for a while. Don't quote me on it, um, but I think that's the case anyway. So this case is kind of neat. Um, you can have your marker stand up or lay flat. I'm just going to kind of have them up like this. Now this kit comes with um, three different kinds of markers and I'm not going to store them together because I made I uh, accidentally grabbed one of these neon markers and they're not compatible with the pro marker so I kind of made a mistake on one of my illustrations one of my stamped images and I'm going to show you how to color but um, this is how they kind of come in the box all right so the marker paper is interesting and I went ahead and I stamped some images with my memento ink because I know that's compatible with um, these markers any alcohol markers and you've seen me use this before and the reason I'm stamping rather than freehand drawing is because most you guys are watching this because you're stampers on my channel and I stamped a few things on here and you're gonna notice this is really thin paper it's crispy and thin I put a piece of copy paper between where I was coloring and the rest of the pad so I didn't um, didn't contaminate it and this pad of 50 sheets retails for about $12 um, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. I was kind of worried when I saw how thin it was and I was wondering if it was really going to have many applications for a crafter because it is so thin and we typically stamp on cardstock. But the thing I noticed was that it seemed like I could color quicker and it used less ink. And the colors in this kit are very bold so it was kind of hard for me to get subtle blending. Um, I did grab one of my um, Letraset Pro markers. This is how the, the packaging used to look uh, from my stash downstairs just so I could blend. The thing that I've noticed about my Pro Markers, because I've had them quite a few years, my other ones, is that they haven't dried out unless I've really, really used them a lot. Um, so the caps seem to work really well. And I like how I can identify where, which end is the pointy end, <laughs> in, because it's always the pointy ended barrel. Now on the um, on the new ones, they actually index the ends, and my old Pro Markers didn't, I don't think they indexed the ends before, so what I did, and it's not a bad idea, uh, just so you know what your colors actually look like, what I look like to, what I did was I actually um, colored swatches on sticker paper and punched them out and stuck it to the end of my cap so I could tell what the actual color was, other than, rather than having a bunch of black um, caps just staring at me from my um, marker case. So that is um, a tip you can do, but it looks like they're indexing them now that they're Windsor & Newton, which is really nice. And um, Windsor & Newton has been doing a lot with markers lately, with their watercolor markers and their pigment markers. I think they're really um, trying to be a big player in the marker game, um, and they don't seem to do anything halfway. I've never been disappointed with a Windsor & Newton product. Um, I have been not so crazy about the price, because the prices tend to be higher, but just so you know. So, oh, let's talk about the price. Um, individually, these markers are going for $5 a piece. Let your that used to be known kind of as the um, economy line of markers, meaning like they were a little bit cheaper than Prismacolor, a lot cheaper than Copics. Um, so now they're right up there with Prismacolors and kind of getting close to Copic prices. But they also and also have a brush tipped marker now, which I think they had started to introduce under Letraset. I didn't have any of those, but um, they've now got the brush marker, which is really nice, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. So you're probably sick of me talking, so let's just, uh, let's start demoing. So this didn't come in the set. I just wanted to let you know that's a clear blender. You can use whatever brand clear blender you want. They're essentially the same. They're filled with a, kind of like an ethanol or alcohol solution that will blend these alcohol-based markers. Um, so these three markers here are the neon markers. They are a water-based watercolor marker, very much like the um, the 
what were they called? Aqua markers from Letraset. I don't know if those are going to be rebranded under Winsor & Newton or not because Winsor & Newton have the delightful watercolor markers which are fantastic so I don't I don't know if they would uh, do that but these have a um, and see here they've got a well I'll do this on this piece of paper. They've got a pointy nib not a chisel nib so they don't look like your typical highlighter they're just like the watercolor markers i don't know how the, well this will do on this marker paper because this is not these are not pro markers and so these are just really really bright neon colors i've used these before under the letra set brand they're they blend really well with water not sure if they would blend well on this paper we'll give it a try though because i have a uh, water brush right here oh you know they're blend, they're they're blending all right I probably still would go with a watercolor paper just because it's a um, it's a rather thin paper, but I only have those three colors, so it's really um, not too much I could do with that. Well, I guess I could do green to yellow. We could we could try that. Let's just draw a little leaf there. Let's zoom in a little bit here. We'll do a leaf. And again, I really would recommend a watercolor paper. I think this is going to pill this paper just because it's so. Um, it's, it's designed for non-water media, but you can see it does pill, but it does blend the colors out. And a little bit of water here. We can even blend it out further if we want to. So, but with only three markers, it doesn't really give you that much of a, uh, a tryout. It doesn't give you much of a demonstration on that, but I do have a video where I did demonstrate these aqua markers, and I'll put a link in the video description to that, or in a handy-dandy card up in the corner of the screen if you are on mobile and you can't see the video description or whatever. Okay, the other markers that came in here were metallic markers, and these were kind of cool. These seem to be a water-based marker. I don't smell, there's no odor at all. So let me just show you that on white paper, and then let me show you here on the dark paper. So it's really stunning on the dark paper. I don't know if you can see the metallicness of it. Maybe if I tip that up a little bit. Um, but that's really nice. But again, I would store it within, they've got a, this broader tip. That's a silver, isn't that pretty? Um, but I wouldn't store them with these because if I went to grab these, um, to thinking that it's going to work with my pro markers, I would be really disappointed, but you get a nice, it's hard to see the metallic on the white paper, but you can see it on the black really easily. That's just, um, construction paper there. And I like the dual nibs. I like having a, uh, wide nib if I want to do like the edge of border on a card or something like that. And I'm sure you'll see these in upcoming tutorials. I just wanted to just quickly show you those because they're in the kit. Now let's get um, to the coloring. I'm just going to set this pad out of the way um, and I'm going to tear off that piece. We'll use that for scrap if we need it. Um, and you can see when I use the Aquamart, well I don't know if you can see actually, maybe you can there, it did make the paper underneath buckle when I used the water media. So this is just for your alcohol markers like your pro markers. It even says pro marker, where does it say? Right there, it's a big old pro marker marker. Ooh, camera doesn't want to focus on that. Uh, but there it is. So it does clearly tell you that um, that is what that is for. Okay, we're gonna fall on the floor in a second. All right, so we are going to do some coloring. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways here because, and I got to zoom back out a little bit. I'm a little too close. We're getting a little too personal. It's a little too close and personal. Um, so this, I'm going to do a petal like I colored that. And I used this um, purple pro marker. This is just purple. And I used the um, Orchid, Wild Orchid brush marker. So you'll see these are compatible. It just comes down to kind of personal preference, how you like to color. Both of these markers will have a chisel end. The blunt end is chisel and on the brush marker you have a brush and on the pro marker you have a um, firm bullet nib. So let's just, we're going to do a couple different ways to color a petal here and um, I'm going to start here the way I typically color with my alcohol markers is I will go in with my dark. Now purple is a harder color to blend so um, this might not be the best technique. The second technique I show you will probably be a little bit better for um, for doing like a, something like purples or reds, which are harder to blend. Then I go over that purple with my medium tone. And this is a brush marker. So if you're having a hard time getting that to blend, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I feel like I'm going to make you guys go like nauseous here with the zooming in and zooming out. You can actually go to the chisel end and you can force your pigment around a little bit better because the brush tip is so soft that it's hard to um, to force it around. You won't need to force it too much with um, with other 
colors because they just like yellows and greens and blues they just blend a little bit easier but when you're working with something like a red or a purple you might need to do that now something I like to do if I want that third range and I don't have a marker in that range is to use my clear blender and kind of go in and lighten the color now the blender the blender marker doesn't really blend so much as it lightens or erases it's a great color eraser if you make a mistake especially if it's an easy liftable color so I can go in there and lighten it up and then I can go back in with my mid value and kind of smooth things out a bit now this um, is a lot of work and it is if you had more colors, you wouldn't have to do so much work, but we still get a really nice blend there. Now, the next method I want to show you, and I'm just going to skip over here to this petal, is I'm going to show you kind of doing a mid-tone first. Actually, I think there's four techniques I'm going to show you here. This is like doing a mid-tone first. So we color the whole thing with our mid-tone. And you can get a pretty good detail with this um, brush tip nib. I like the brush nibs. I, what I would actually like best would be a bullet on one end and a brush on the other. I really, I don't use a chisel too much unless I'm coloring a really large area and I'm trying to save time. So then what I would do is I would go in with my darker and kind of just feather up some of the uh, lines. Put it, just go in strong in my shadows and just kind of drag up my lines like that. Then I would go in with my highlight, which in this case is just white, is just my clear because I don't have a really light pink. I mean, I probably do downstairs and I can do definitely grab from another brand and blend them, but I really wanted to do a review on this set in case you were interested in it. And then I'm just kind of bridge the gap here with this uh, and kind of color back over the purple so I don't get a weird line. Now, it, the thing about the marker paper that I like, and I have never used like marker paper, air quotes, marker paper, air quotes, um, is that since it's thin and it's very crispy, it, it feels like they, the, um, the pigment just kind of puddles and pools and so I have time to get in there and blend before my ink dries so that is very helpful um, I'm gonna use this on a card probably tomorrow if you want to check back and we'll see how it looks with having such thin paper um, embellishing a card okay so that's that's uh, technique number two another technique I'm gonna do this time I'm going to prime it with white or clear I don't want to call it white because I have the white of the paper so let's do that we're gonna we're gonna color this um, all with the clear now, if you get your clear marker contaminated with a pigment, just scribble it off on scrap paper until it comes clear again. Not a big deal. So I've done the clear. Then I'm going to go in with my medium. And I've noticed that when I do this, it wants to um, pick up some of the alcohol in my marker. So, so the next time I use it, it might not be super bright. So I kind of kind of layering over there, letting that fold marker or juice kind of charge through. Then I can go in with my dark. But you can see my orchid color is not as dark as it was if I didn't prime that paper because it's blending and mixing in with what I have underneath. So I can go back in with that orchid color, blend those two together with it. This is probably my least favorite method, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do if you're if you're on a limited palette, if you're traveling and you're only going to bring a few markers, it's a uh, good option. I can go back in with that light if I want to and lighten up some areas. So there is another way to do a petal there. Now this final way I'm going to show you is very handy. I really um, I really like it because as long as you have blending, a clear blending marker, you can pretty much use any um, any of the darker colors and get a really good range of really good range of colors. And I really recommend this if you're just starting out and you don't have um, and you don't have a lot of a lot of supplies. So here, this is just plastic packaging, right? And this is like the suggestion of what those those stamps are by Stampendous that I used, by the way. So what I'm going to do is just take this packaging. You can use a clear stamping block, whatever you have. I'm just going to use this. Um, try to use an area where it's not going to show up too much, but I'm going to take the colors that I used. I'll use the chisel end here. I'm going to scribble out a bunch of that. A white ceramic tile works great for this too. Any plastic packaging, anything non-porous. I'm going to scribble out a bunch of this purple. And then what I'm going to do is use my blender as a paintbrush. So I can go in and I can pick up this 
light color and I can go right on the edge of a petal. And actually I probably want to start in where I want it a little bit darker and work my way up. But that way you can really put subtle um, bits of color in there. And it's actually pretty quick too, especially if you don't have um, all those lighter colors to work with. I can go in with that darker purple. And this is called palette blending. And I do this a lot with my watercolor markers too in a, in a water brush because it allows me to use a lot fewer supplies. Now I didn't get a really great blend with that. I'm gonna try that again. Let's try that again in combination with another technique. So sometimes we, move, we use our techniques together because it gives us a better result. So um, why don't we start off using our medium value? And we'll pull that, kind of pull that up a little bit. I don't want a ton of color there yet. And then I'm going to go into my shadow. So once you get kind of practicing, because it takes practice, alcohol markers are not the easiest thing to get going in. I don't think, I think they take a little bit of a time and effort. So I think it can frustrate people if they're expecting to, um, to get started in alcohol markers and then it doesn't go, it doesn't, the, the learning curve is a little steep, I guess. And then I'm gonna go in with that color with my marker. And I think I might use my, my chisel end just because I can pick up a lot more at once. I can't get the control I need with that. I gotta go in with that, with that brush end. And, um, and they get frustrated, but it really, it really does take practice. I think actually having a um, having a brush marker, blending marker would be better than having the stiff one. I think you'd get a little bit more controlled in a technique like this. But now we have those ranges and I can go over with this while it's still wet and kind of blend everything together. It's not going to be as dark as if I just put it on the paper on its own. So there, you know, you can, you can go completely on the palette, you can go complete with the markers, you can go with you know, as many or as few as you want to get an idea. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do a blend with two completely different colors here with these leaves. I am going to use um, this, this is Pear Green Pro Marker, and I'm going to use the, um, I think I'll use the yellow brush marker, and I think I'll also use this teal. So I don't have the colors that I want, so I'm going to blend on my paper here. And excuse the upside down bird. <laughs> Actually, I could flip that around so you're looking at the right side up bird. Not that it really matters because I'm showing you how to do a leaf and not a bird, but they, there you have it. I like to be accommodating. <laughs> so this time um, for this, I'm actually going to start with my medium value, which is this pear green. Now, Promarker used to have a set back when they were Letra set, and, and it didn't last long. And it was a shame because it was such a wonderful kit. They had it was called the blend, blending kits, blending sets, and I love them. And, and I hope they bring something like this back because it really took a lot of the guesswork and the fear um, out of buying these markers and using these for beginners. And they were in pastels, muted, or brights, and they had um, and they had two shades of every color. So it was a set of like 12 colors plus a blender, and there was two shades of each color so you could blend together. So the pastels had really, really light shades, and muted had medium shades, and the vibrant had really bright shades. And I really think the muted and pastels are the, were the most useful. Um, and they were fantastic. I mean, some of the colors were not would not be what I would put together to blend, but still, it was the best of what was out there. Um, but they never lasted long. They never really caught on. Um, but I'd love to see it if, if, if Windsor Newton or any, or another marker company, even anybody would take on that idea again, because it can get really expensive and frustrating to get started out. So even with two colors, it looks pretty good, but I think it looks fantastic when I take this, um, what is this ocean teal and I kind of flick on some color over that and you can see just adds that lovely depth. And these colors are not three that you'd say, yeah, those are gonna blend together. You know, if you were looking at, you know, your Copic charts or whatever, or following the advice of, you know, somebody that knows a lot more than I do, they wouldn't be blending these colors because they'd have much more colors to work with. Um, but if you're starting out, you generally don't. And um, this is just kind of a way to get around it. Now, that said, I don't think there's anything terribly special about these markers. They're good, but I don't, but if you already have some alcohol markers, you can definitely do these techniques. I'm showing 
own you with them. I just wanted to kind of show you how to use a set if you were interested in buying it. And I really think that, you know, it's practice. It comes down to practice. You can get really um, excited and go out and buy all the tools and really not know how to use them because you haven't given yourself enough time to practice. Now I wanted to do something different with the bird. I hope you're not sick of watching me color. If you are, I apologize. Um, but I thought I would do something with this bird because um, it's just kind of... I didn't really like the blues that I used on that one I, and my colors weren't very subtle so I thought I might go in with some of the browns and yellows that I had and see if I could do something with those. So I've got this um, same yellow I just used on that leaf. I'm going to use this chestnut brown and I've got this um, saddle brown and maybe I've got this fire brick and orange and I think maybe I might want to use a little bit of those. I'm not sure. I'm going to set those aside for right now, but I think I'm going to go right in with my yellow and see what I can do here. And maybe I'll actually go in and prime this with the, um, clean off my marker by scribbling it on a scrap, kind of go in and just kind of prime this. I'm not even going all the way to the edges. I just want to make sure my ink will flow a little bit. There we go. And I hear kids coming through the door, so hopefully it won't be too loud here. And I'm going to go in and put some of the yellow here. Actually, I'm going to go in with a bullet tip. Oh, it's the brush tip, even better. And I'm actually kind of following along with the suggestion on my stamp packet to kind of get my, get my coloring ideas. Here we go. And I'll have to do this demo pretty quick because I just noticed that I'm just about out of battery power here with my uh, camera. So there'll be a little incentive. I'm going to go in, actually, I think I want a little bit of blue here on the head. Because I am going to go by that uh, illustration that's on the package of my stamps. And I do want to, I just want to work within the color range here. I kind of challenge myself a little bit, a little bit of blue there. I'm going to get in some of this lighter brown. The thing that it seems like a lot of the kits lack when you're when you're buying a kit rather than buying open stock is that you don't get the lighter ranges and it might not be as big of a deal depending on what you're doing for illustration but as stampers it seems like we need those lighter colors in order to be able to work with a lot of these so that's something to consider you know when you're buying i think it's probably better to buy them open stock just because um, you can get exactly what you want. You might, you know, want to have 10 markers that are just skin tones and then have, you know, a, some really pastel shades because you like to do flowers, you know, or maybe you want some darker colors because that's what you feel like working on. You like to do more bold, high contrast designs. And, but, and so I found that kits very rarely, um, uh, kind of meet the needs of an artist when you're working with these type of materials. That's just my, uh, my two cents anyways. I'm afraid this is going to be really dark, so uh, let me just scribble some of that onto a, uh, onto, well maybe that's not, uh, I'm going to go in with my blender just in case. Pick up that color, hopefully good enough on there. And kind of soften those edges while I'm at it. And then I can go back in with the marker once I've added that blender. It'll make it a lot easier. I'm getting a little gray with that um, when you mix that blue and the red, and that's kind of nice. You kind of want to have natural grays in your work. I really think that it would be much nicer to do this with a, uh, a larger range of colors or more subtle shades personally, but you know, you got to work with what you have. You got to start somewhere. And honestly, working with a limited palette, even though it can be frustrating, especially for a beginner, you're going to learn so much more and you're going to be so much better of an artist because of it. So um, please don't, don't be upset or don't feel bad if you can't afford a ton of markers. You're actually probably doing your you know, artistic self a big favor by not having so many. And you're going to be like, that's the pot calling the kettle black, you know, her saying that when you're so many things, but, um, but I really believe it. 
I really do. Use your supplies. Collecting them will do you no good. But there you go. There's a, you know, we did a bird, we did a flower. I think these are great markers. Um, you know, shop around if you're going to buy them because you'll see they're much cheaper some places than others. And um, if you buy them, use them. That's the important thing no matter what else. So I'll just zoom out really quick and show you these markers one more time. Of course, all of them are out of the case. Um, I gave them uh, I gave them a pretty good run through. I think if you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below in the comments section and I'll get back to you. And, and also, if you have any advice for people and you want to share in the comments, please do that. That helps everybody. And remember, sharing is caring. Uh, there's another look at the illustrations I did with the pro markers and brush markers. And um, yeah, I'll put a link to the Windsor Newton website so you can find out more. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more crafty tutorials. And until next time, happy crafting.